So uh, today's presentation really uh, is the result of uh, many people asking me on numerous occasions, um, you know, why why AS67, why SMPTE 2110, why don't we all just use Dante and get on with it? And uh, and that's you know that's a good question. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of pros, a lot of advantages to using uh, full stack proprietary solutions. Uh, and I think that they're very appropriate for many uh, for many applications, but not not for all applications. You know, certainly one of the advantages is the avoidance of interoperability issues, um, the easy to use solutions. You know, Dante's great in that respect. Um, but the reason that we persist pri primarily in continuing the evolution of AS67 and and OpenStack solutions is because sometimes um, we need something that's a little different. And we need to give developers the freedom to innovate. So what do we mean by that? So for example, uh, there are those applications, for example, in, in uh, satellite communications that uh, go long distances and have very, uh, very uh, uh, more stringent latency requirements than you'd find in, uh, in live sound. Um, security requirements differ in uh, in airports, in uh, <clears throat> in transportation. Uh, the alignment of audio and video signals that may not be inherent in these proprietary solutions, and of course the degree of sophistication that you find from users, particularly in broadcast, um, is is uh, also comes into play. So, as much as, as the uh, control system that we see on the left here is very intuitive and very easy to use for many people, it doesn't always uh, suit the job, the needs of the job. So what, what, are, we, what are we talking about? Uh, a technology stack built on open technologies. I would encourage you to take a look at the publication on the right here from the European Broadcast Union, the EBU. And it goes beyond AS67 to include uh, registration and discovery, connection control technologies. Uh, so it, it goes beyond just the transport of AS67 to, uh, to the control layer as well to consider security uh, configuration and monitoring aspects. And how we're doing that, of course, is through AIMS, uh, an association of a, a number of multiple vendors and multiple users. Uh, collaborating to to innovate in these various application areas. So, before I go any further and, and, and showing examples of how we've we've actually succeeded in enabling this innovation, I just want you to consider uh, an analogy. And the analogy really is uh, the Linux operating system versus the Windows operating system. When uh, when I started my engineering career 25 years ago, uh, Linux was still very much in its infancy. It was uh, difficult to use. Uh, it was very limited in its capability. Uh, you know, you couldn't find very many applications for it. But one thing that it did have going for it was that it was open and gave developers the freedom to innovate, which meant that an untold number of developers jumped in. So who would have known then? I certainly had no idea 25 years ago what Linux was to become today. And so if we consider uh, air traffic control systems, financial technologies, supercomputers, smartphones. My watch is running Linux, uh, at least a version of, of, of Linux today. The Internet of Things. These are applications that I pose would not have been possible if it weren't for the, the, the open aspect of, uh, of Linux. Uh, it's not something that Windows would have been able to fit into. I, I still can't run win, uh, Windows on my uh, on my smartphone today. So, so that's really what drives us forward. What what uh, propels us to continue uh, the the drive to evolve AS67 and persist with open technologies. And here are some examples of of where we've succeeded already. Um, here's a, an example of a broadcaster that is looking at network latencies to grow across Europe of, of more than 80 milliseconds. And uh, 
what we've, what we've been able to do is to implement WAN buffering, what we call wide area network buffers, that can handle up to uh, 500 milliseconds of latency. And this is very important in uh, remote production applications, again, for example, across Europe. In some cases, what we want is we want very high capacity, very low latency, like this example here from CalREC. Uh, you know, up to 512 channels, 96 kilohertz, 125 microsecond packet times. These are, uh, these are performance um, criteria that uh, you, can't, you can't find in off-the-shelf proprietary solutions. Another example here is, is uh, this is an intercom application. Uh, where because of the workflow requirements of the intercom application, the user interface is, is tailored to the workflow of intercom. And so the, the, the challenge here was developing an, uh, a control system API at the lower levels, so a layered approach that allows the user to maintain its familiar intercom uh, user interface. Uh, but under the hood, we, we maintain the AS67 stack um, and we also use PTP to generate a number of specific clock signals to enable the synchronization of wireless networks. So that's, a, that's actually a very good, uh, a good example of an application that wasn't thought of before, right? The synchronization of wireless signals. Um, and lastly, one that, um, that I'm very excited about right now is a, uh, a microservices-based uh, sound card. So this is a, a Linux platform that allows for containerized uh, audio processing delivery. Uh, delivery of, of sorry, uh, the, the orchestration of containerized audio processing applications. Uh, targeting primarily broadcast applications, broadcast signal flows, but of course, this, this, uh, this could be extended to a number of different industries. And in order to enable that type of innovation, RESTful APIs are required. Um, OpenStack, Docker, all of these kinds of things. And th those integrations wouldn't be possible without the, uh, the open technologies. Um, lastly, I want to make a special mention of a, uh, of a control system that was developed by one of our members. Uh, this is uh, Animin, the audio network uh, manager. And uh, this, this program here was developed by uh, Merging Technologies. Uh, Ross Video, my company, the company that I work for, is, is, uh, is contributing and integrating with this uh, uh, multi-vendor uh, control system. Very intuitive, easy to use, and uh, what, what we understand is that the engine uh, will be open sourced and will allow for extension and, uh, and adaptation. So again, keeping with the, uh, the theme of, of, of Linux. Um, so in conclusion, I think that what we've learned is that, you know, that there are very, uh, there's, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's room for everything. There's room for bespoke uh, proprietary systems such as Windows, right? Windows still enjoys a significant market share, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't fit all applications. And just like no one would doubt the value of Linux today, I think that hopefully I've, I've uh, helped uh, the audience here understand why we persist in, in developing uh, the AIMS roadmap. And uh, hopefully you'll consider joining us in developing the full stack of, uh, of open technologies that are pointed at in the, uh, in the AIMS roadmap. Thank you very much. Are there any, any questions from, uh, from the audience? All right, well, thanks again.